G'day guys and gal, there are a few keywords from Warhammer 40k which will, without fail, prick up the curious ears of every neckbeard within 2 square kilometers. Black Templars, Steel Legion, Titans, Mega Gargans, Armageddon, all these words probably give you flashes of glorious mental images, awesome bits of lore, and a powerful stiffy. So what if I told you that the Siege of Hell's Reach, one of the greatest bits of Warhammer lore in existence, and the inspiration for the first ever legendary Warhammer fan animated series, included all of these things and more. Just quickly, check this out. New toys, baby. I've spent so much money on this stuff. Gonna be worth it though. Trust me. Everyone has heard of Hell's Reach, the most epic last stand, a display of the Black Templar's might and courage against the ferocity and downright scariness of the orcs. Too often, orcs are seen as a minor threat, happy-go-lucky cannon fodder, but Hell's Reach really does them justice and shows why they are one of the biggest players in the galaxy's theatre of war. But unless you've read the book or recently watched the 13-part Hell's Reach series, you probably aren't aware of exactly how awesome the siege was or what actually happened to make it so revered amongst the veterans of the Warhammer lore community. And even if you have read the book or watched the series lately, you haven't heard some dipshit Aussie compress it into 10 minutes. Before we get started, we all know and love the Lawnmower 4.0. When your girl comes out and says, Babe, I love your mammoth cock, but it's just too woolly down there. I didn't say you had a mammoth cock. Look, do you want that $20 or not? I love your mammoth cock. No stress at all. The Lawnmower 4.0 will give us the cleanest and safest cock and ball shave there is. Not to mention that the ball deodorant makes stanky dick a thing of the past. But did you know that there is a new kid, a new manscaping tool on the block? The Plow 2.0. There is more to manscape than just shaving your balls. A man's face also requires scaping. As Warhammer fans, our neckbeards grow at an accelerated rate, and we gotta keep it in check. With a single-bladed razor, it's gonna be a clean cut. Now, single-bladed razors can be spooky, but with added safety features, the Plow is safe and easy to use. Just like how the lawnmower can't nip your scrotum, the Plow won't slit your throat. Bundle this up with a high-quality travel bag, and you'll be able to scape your man across the globe. Using my linking code MAJORKILL below, you can get 20% off and free international shipping. That's 20% off the perfect package, the Plow 2.0, the travel bag, and 20% off the $20 I'm giving to Alex. You only get $16 now. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the Siege of Hell's Reach, talking about its prelude, the siege itself, and what impact on the setting the final outcome had. We will also talk about the legendary Black Templar Grimaldus because he makes my panties wet. Let's get into it. To set the scene, we are on the planet of Armageddon, named by some dipshit who seemed adamant on making it the most war-torn planet in the galaxy. Armageddon used to be the orc homeworld of Ulanor, which is why it subconsciously draws so many orcs to it. That, and it's a heavily defended industrial world, so any orc that goes there is guaranteed a good scrap. As it was so productive, it became an essential point of supply for many surrounding Imperial worlds and armies. This is also why the Imperium was so hellbound on defending it. Losing Armageddon would by extension lose the Imperium numerous wars not yet declared due to a lack of supplies and weaponry. A large and heavily fortified city on Armageddon was Hell's Reach. During the Second War of Armageddon, when the Orcs first came to the world to get their dicks stomped on, Hell's Reach was attacked. As such, when the Orcs returned for the Third War of Armageddon, their dicks having recovered from the previous stomping, Hell's Reach was on their shit list. They wanted revenge. As such, it quickly became obvious from Orc troop positioning and all-round Orkiness that the attack was going to occur. Now, it could be argued that the Orcs chose Hell's Reach as a strategic point to attack because it was an important fortress and had a lot of tactical advantages, but in all honesty, the Orcs knew they would just have a great time. The Imperium's forces were stretched thin, as you know, the entire fucking planet was at war everywhere, hence the army that was sent to reinforce Hell's Reach wasn't exactly the most impressive thing ever, but it was still decent. Quite a few guardsmen of the Armageddon Steel Legion were sent to reinforce the city, whilst shitloads of militia from the city itself were armed and told to shoot anything that spoke broken English. The Imperial Navy also got involved, sending in various aircraft to counter the Orcs' air forces. Most famous of all, 100 Black Templars led by the recently promoted Reclusiarch Grimaldus were sent in. The final piece of the puzzle was a number of Titans who weren't even sure that they wanted to waste their lives defending Hell's Reach or not. It was this weird vibe where the city was important so it needed to be defended, but everyone sent to defend it felt like they were sent there to die and that the Imperium wouldn't really care. 
Grimaldus felt this more so than anyone. As such, Grimaldus was flustered and frustrated to hear that the Titans weren't even sure if they would help or not. So he marched up to the biggest Titan and he was like, Oi, fuck Ed, if you don't help us, we're going to get absolutely wrecked. Are you in or out? Sensing Grimaldus' abnormally large balls, the Titan pilot agreed to fight alongside the Black Templars in the defense of Hell's Reach. The first engagement was when a random orc ship Leroy Jenkins into orbit and crash landed outside the city. The Black Templars ventured out, destroyed the wrecked ship, and they killed all the orcs within it before dusting off their hands and going back to the city. It was a bit random, but fair enough. Soon after this, the rest of the orcs broke through the orbital blockade, and they began to land. Initially, the orcs tried to just crash land into the city and overwhelm it instantly, but the city's defenses were able to obliterate nearly every orc ship that tried to land. Any that did crash land were so damaged that the few orcs that survived were mowed down by teams of soldiers running around the city. The next wave of orcs learnt from this mistake and they landed their forces outside of the city, with some landing on the south pole of the planet. This confused the defenders as it seemed useless, so they ignored it and they focused on the more immediate threat in the wastelands outside the walls. Grimaldus was a tactical genius, even if he refused to admit it himself. He knew the orcs would be mega horny for war after spending so long cramped in their ships. He knew they wouldn't wait for their gargants and siege engines to be ready, and he was right. The orcs instantly ran at the walls of Hell's Reach, not a single tactical decision made at all. Grimaldus gave the first of his many inspirational speeches to the men around him, and then they opened fire. Thousands of greenskins died every second as the city's turrets fired, the men shot their las rifles, and the Imperial aircraft did bombing runs. Any orc that managed to get to the wall found themselves without any way of breaching or climbing it, so they too died. This went on for hours, as all the dipshit retard orcs were massacred, whilst the more intelligent and tactical orcs were regrouping, setting up camp, and waiting for their armaments that could actually do something. Eventually, the orcs retreated and regrouped after suffering obscene casualties without making any progress. Nice. However, the Orc Gargans had arrived. There was now elements on the battlefield that could breach the walls. These Gargans were outlined targets for the Titans to engage. As a bit of a plot twist, Grimaldus also discovered the existence of numerous ammunition caches hidden in the wilderness. On top of that, there was legend of a super weapon, built by the Mechanicus hundreds of years ago, hidden somewhere that Grimaldus wanted to get his hands on. Grimaldus and his tech marine boarded a Thunderhawk and they travelled to an abandoned Mechanicus facility nearby. The Orcs were still regrouping and had not yet launched their next attack, so now was the perfect time for a cheeky super weapon excursion. They arrived at the facility and the tech marine was able to crack every code leading to the super weapon each code getting more difficult to crack than the last. By the time they got to the final door, the tech marine revealed it would take him 9 days to unlock this door and get access to the weapon. Grimaldus ordered him to do so, but he was low-key like, how the fuck am I going to hold Hell's Reach for 9 days? Hence the tech marine stayed, and Grimaldus returned to Hell's Reach for its defense. Unfortunately for the defenders, it would take a lot longer than 9 days for the super weapon to be accessible. The Titan Princeps wasn't too happy that Grimaldus was trying to fuck with the Mechanicus superweapon, and she threatened to kill him, but then he threatened to kill her, so they reached a truce where they decided not to kill each other. Like I said, Grimaldus has very large balls. The Orcs began their assault in earnest, bringing their Gargants into the fray and breaching the walls. However, as soon as the first Gargants made a gap in the walls, they got mega cum blasted by the Titans and were deleted from this plane of existence. As before, the waves of orcs that poured into the city were slaughtered. Each meter of ground taken was measured in the blood of thousands of orcs. However, ground was being taken. The Imperial defenders were not yet ready to scream out for the Emperor and charge in. They were tactically pulling back to various barricades and blockades that had been set up. The battle was looking very good for the Imperium. However, that's when a few things started to go sideways. Firstly, the leader of the Navy force wanted to be a hero, so he tricked the commanding officer Saren into basically letting him suicide charge his planes at the Orcs. Whilst they did bomb the fuck out of the Orcs and achieve their goal, the city no longer had aircraft. On top of this, the lead Titan Princeps was having issues with her Titan. The Titan was a massive asshole, and he wanted to burn out her brain and take control. Titans lack critical thinking, and they act very emotionally. As such, when a Reaver class Titan fell to an Orc trap and was destroyed, the lead Titan raged and charged in, falling to the same trap and also nearly dying. This would have been a huge L for the Imperial Defenders, so it's fortunate that Grimaldus saved her ass and kept the Titan in the battle. After a grueling 18 days, the Imperial forces finally had to fall back to the next line of defense. They had done an amazing job in holding off the Orcs, however the Orcs had reached a critical point. 
a part of the city called Hell's Highway, which was this large lane that allowed for rapid transport of troops and machines of war. With the Orcs taking this, they could now attack at an even more accelerated rate, pushing the Imperial defenders back faster than they had been before. This was the beginning of the end for the defenders, as by this point, half the city had been lost and significant portions of the Astartes, Militia, and even the Titans had died. By the 36th day of the siege, shit got even more grim. The Orcs that landed on the South Pole had turned their ships into hundreds of submarines, and were now launching coastal invasions of various cities, including Hell's Reach. The attack was imminent, so there wasn't enough time to redirect enough troops to the docks. As such, the remaining civilian populations, which were gathered in the docks, were given small weapons to hold the line. The Black Templars also flew their Thunderhawks in to help hold the docks. The Orc water troops emerged, and another bloody battle took place. Despite the presence of the Astartes, the Imperial defenders were slowly being pushed back, and doom from both sides looked inevitable. However, the Orcs made one big mistake. They attack civilians on a planet that the Salamanders were on. Nobody fucks with civilians when the big flaming boys are around. Hence 70 Salamanders dropped in, fucked up the orcs attacking their docks, gave everyone a hug and words of encouragement, then left. Despite the docks now being secure, they had been devastated alongside most of the city's supplies. In some good news, the Tech Marine had finally unlocked the Mechanicus superweapon. It was old, and he could barely activate it properly, meaning it lacked its void shields, could only fire once every 20 minutes, and was a shadow of its former self. Imagine when it was built and properly maintained, it was like a Baywatch Pamela Anderson. And now, it is 54-year-old Pamela Anderson. It's not the beast that once was, but boy oh boy, you'd still fuck her in a heartbeat. What I'm trying to say is that the super weapon's fuck off big gun is still more than capable of blowing a huge load. The tech marine began driving it to Hell's Reach. Whilst the docks were being secured, the Titans held the main Orc forces at bay. They had lost many Titans, but still held strong. However, boss music started playing, as the Orc's trump card was brought into play. A Mega Gargant called the Godbreaker. Godbreaker had already destroyed a city on its way to Hell's Reach, and the first thing it did upon its arrival was destroy multiple small class Titans with ease. A legendary Imperator class Titan faced off against Godbreaker. Unfortunately, the Titan was damaged, and its pilot was borderline brain dead from all the effort. Its only chance for victory was for its crew to fire its plasma annihilator at the Godbreaker to bring the behemoth down. Unfortunately, one of the crew members was a fuckwit, and he fired the gun too early before it had locked onto its target. So the shot missed, and then Godbreaker tore off the legendary Titan's head, killing its crew. With the death of its leader, the remaining Titans withdrew from Hell's Reach, as it was only her agreement with Grimaldus that was keeping them there. With her death, the agreement was void. Without Titans, the city was lost. Grimaldus took his few remaining Black Templars and whatever guardsmen were left to make a final stand in the courtyard of the city's temple. The Astartes were backed up by the Sisters of Battle that made their home there. Orcs charged in, and they were cut down by the furious Space Marines. When the Black Templar Emperor's champion fell, it just pissed off Grimaldus even more, and it drove him to even greater feats of violence. Then, Godbreaker came. Shit. With a single blast, the Godbreaker would be more than capable of wiping out the last of Hell's Reach, but before it could fire, the Mechanicus superweapon had been driven into range by the Tech Marine, and that fired instead. With a single mega shot, Godbreaker was blown apart. Huge W for the Imperium, however that didn't do much to save Grimaldus. There were still thousands of Orcs, and he was down to about 100 troops, including the Sisters of Battle, his Templars, and the remaining Guardsmen. As his soldiers were butchered around him, the temple collapsed, crushing and killing everyone. Except Grimaldus. The Mad Lad raised himself out of the rubble, and he said, I didn't hear no bell. Despite that being the final last stand and collapse of the defenders, the Imperium had held Hell's Reach long enough for the season of fire to begin, a period of time where random firestorms covered parts of Armageddon, making it hard to move around and seed shit. As such, most of the remaining orcs withdrew to safety, allowing the Imperial survivors to reclaim the city. Despite this, uh, kind of victory, Hell's Reach was left a ruin with numerous orc survivors scavenging around its wreckage. Due to Grimaldus' staunch defense of the city, despite him being in a position where he could have abandoned it, he was named the Hero of Hell's Reach, and he continues to serve the Emperor's light till this day. It truly was the mother of all last stands, constantly being pushed back by overwhelming odds until literally fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat within a crumbling chapel of your own god. 
This was a very abridged and compressed version of the siege. There are tons of small details and scenes I haven't included because I don't do 40 minute videos. So if this has sparked your interest in it, then consider buying the Hell's Rage book or watching the Hell's Rage series on YouTube. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only $1 per month to give you access to a metric hell load of reachable hentai. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.